Okay, thank you so much for being here. So once again, uh, just a small disclaimer. It's against our, I would say, ethical rules to present on our own conferences. But since the speaker who could not make it uh, just a few days ago, uh, well, we have to like, you know, rearrange the program. And uh, these guys voted for me to do a presentation for you. Yes, because they don't have any presentation ready. So that's why I was like, you know, uh, the victim of this. So uh, once again, sorry, this presentation was done in two days, but I hope you really like it. Uh, and yes, we are going to talk about the future today. Not the things you do at home or at work, or actually the things you're going to do at home in the night when nobody touches you. Yes, so uh, we're going to talk about reactive versus blocking with Helidon. I work for Oracle, so that's why you all see this slide. <laughs> yes, um, um, it means that whenever you take your business decisions, please read again all the legal stuff, because otherwise you will be suited. Yes, and uh, uh, yes, this is me, this is my name, uh, this is my wonderful art, whatever it is. Yes, my name is Dimitri, I work at Oracle, and uh, you can contact me with these handlers. Uh, at any time of day and night. And today I'm going to talk to you about actually the things I'm, uh, the thing I'm working on. Uh, so I'm quite happy that I'm going to tell you about really the, thir the things I'm busy during the day. And sometimes during the night, it depends on whether we release or not. So, uh, <coughs> you heard a lot about Spring, you probably heard a lot about uh, Quarkus, maybe Micronaut, but uh, Helidon is new, cool Java framework for creating microservices. Actually, it's not that new. It's actually quite mature. But uh, it was mostly used internal, but then it was open source to everybody. And uh, it's awesome. And uh, why it is awesome? First of all, the name. You probably wonder what the name Helidon is. And here you can read that it's Swallow, and I really love it, because uh, Swallow is a small bird which is so maneuverable and fast, and it flies in the clouds, so where the microservices are. And uh, of course, the best part of it is that it's completely open source, which is not typical for Oracle. Yes, so this is uh, the first of the second framework, which is open sourced. And uh, everything is in GitHub. You don't need to write any OCA, so whatever, if, if you want to contribute, just we accept PRs. You can go there and contribute. Uh, currently, it is built on top of Netty, which makes it really fast. Uh, once again, it's cloud native ready. And uh, cloud native means that you have everything, not just to run your REST service somewhere in the clouds. You got everything, observability, tracing metrics, and all of that stuff. It is available to you out of the box. And uh, last but not least, uh, is that we are so much crawl VM native image friendly that we are completely proud of it because 99% of our code or even more is crawl VM native image ready. So it is awesome. And uh, that's why when you see these numbers, they actually talk to each other, uh, talk uh, the self explanatory. Here you can see that we uh, supply three ways of delivering our products. So first of all is executable jar with hollow jar with libraries outside. Uh, then was the uh, Gravium native image. And in the middle stays something which is uh, JLink created uh, image, which is a custom image. So from the very, very beginning of uh, developing Helidon, it is modular. So that means that you will really need at least Java 11 plus, and for the next latest latest uh, uh, version 3.0, 3 which comes like next month, you will even need Java 17 to run it. We're not that all legacy like Java 6 or 7 that mostly people run. Sorry for that. But if you want to migrate, you have to migrate the JVM and the Java itself because we use all the latest stuff there, like really all the latest stuff. And I will show you a little bit more. So. Uh, this is a very overview uh, of, uh, of what is actually Helidon. Once again, uh, I'm not going to talk to you about like um, 
the, the, the Helidon, how can you write Hello Worlds there? But I will mostly focus on, uh, uh, I would say, a little bit custom use of it. So if you want to, more, uh, to know more about Helidon, just go to our official YouTube channel or just type in Helidon on YouTube and you will see a lot of nice videos explaining you. Today, actually, I'm going to talk to you mostly about Reactive. And as you see here, uh, Helidon itself is based on Netty. So this is the, the foundation. On top of it, we have a set of Reactive libraries, or we call it Helidon SE. And then we decided that we want to be uh, portable. And in our uh, opinion, MicroProfile uh, as an initiative was the best, actually, uh, way to make our code portable in terms of uh, code, configuration, everything. So that's why Helidon turned out to have two main flavors. So this makes the product quite unique, that you can write uh, your microservices in a uh, standard, I would say, way, like with a bunch of annotations, like the Spring guys, on the, in, the other, in the other more conditioned room than this one. Yes, and uh, or you can make it really hot, like this room, with Helidon SE, which is pure Java with only one annotation used, which is override. Yes, so uh, Helidon MP provides blocking way of doing your stuff. Uh, it's fast, but when you want to gain real performance, you need, don't want to have magic. And that's why you use Helidon SE. But still, just to let you know what Helidon MP is, I will just mention that uh, as I said, we chose a micro-profile initiative uh, to make our code portable. That means that, uh, for those of you who don't know, so this is a set of specifications, currently 13 main specifications, which are specially designed for microservices world. That means that uh, they are not implementations. They are specs that Helidon is implementing in this case. So to make your code really like uh, uh, portable, when you implement this specification, you can easily migrate from servers like Open Liberty. Who was on the talk for Open Liberty like earlier today? You can easily migrate from Open Liberty to this. This is better option, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, or from uh, Tommy Tribe, or you can, if you don't like Helidon, which is practically impossible, you can migrate back to Open Liberty, or if they pay you more, I don't know. Uh, but uh, the idea is that your code begins to be portable. Uh, and that means that you have all, all you need for observability of your microservices, of health checks, of securities with JWT propagations, of uh, you know managing it all with CDI, and uh, uh, this makes it really like standard way of doing stuff. So you can easily start developing with this. And if you get micro, not micro profile, but Helidon MP, you get even more from the from the very beginning. You have um, Microprofile libraries, some um, uh, some Jakarta libraries, or even Helidon specific libraries like Course and gRPC. By the way, my timer is not running, so I can speak for ages if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, once again, what makes once again the uh, Helidon quite unique is exactly the um, you got full CDI support. CDI stands for uh, Context Dependency Injection, uh, implemented by Weld which is available to you even in native image. Other frameworks don't have this. So when you write your application with MP, you get all CDI, all working, even in native image, which is quite unique. We have slightly modified world for that, although there is now a big initiative called CDI Lite, when you have a lot of, a lot of stuff actually coming build time for you, which uh, uh, make it even better for GraalVM native image. But once again, this is all blocking. Blocking means that on every request, when you block somewhere in the thread, the thread stays blocked and you wait. If you don't want to wait, uh, as I told you, let's go back to this, uh, this um, uh, diagram. We have this Helidon Reactive or Helidon SE. And uh, what makes, once again, the product quite unique, we did not stop like users from uh, using this underlying API because it's beautiful. Yes, and it's so nice. You have all the features that you have in MP, 
but they are all reactively made uh, available to you with pure Java code. Once again, there are not compatible flavors, but uh, it is available to you as a, I would say, flavor of, 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 uh, of the framework. And as I said here, welcome to the danger zone, because here the numbers are getting even better. So the startup times are like fractions of seconds. This is all completely modular, as you know. And you also got this three way of building your application with, uh, with modular build, with a uh, jar build, or with a native image build. And uh, we once played with uh, GraalVM guys, and we were able to create microservice which has clients, DB clients, microservice REST clients, uh, like, um, what was the next thing? Health, observability, only 10 megabytes. This was the, the, the full executable. I mean, you just double click it and it works. And the startup time was really small. Like, you know, it was fractions of second. Yes, but every time, as I say, reactive, reactive, let's go a little bit to the theory. I can't say I'm the best expert in that, but I will actually try to do this since I have some like background in doing this. So once again, this is the quantity of data that we have right now. Uh, it's 150, uh, 181 zettabytes. We have to process it somehow. And um, you know, uh, because oh, all the capacity now went to mining, you know, we all mine bitcoins. So that's why we have to optimize our, our environments. And uh, that's why when we try to do this optimization, we quite often switch to asynchronous uh, development. And uh, I have a special talk about this, like Think Async in Java 8. Uh, it is quite old talk, but it gives you a good overview about how it's actually solved with a Java 8 feature, which is called Completable Future. And uh, I think uh, this was actually the first step for us uh, to start, you know, utilizing resources better that we have. But most of the time when you actually... Uh, JavaScript developers here? Yes, how many of you start crying when you see this? Yes, so we all ended up with callback hell, and this completable future actually solved this, this thing for us uh, in a way. But uh, we went more. And uh, actually, we came to the, uh, came to the paradigm of uh, reactive programming, which is quite, you know, qu quite a buzzword right now. So you see this copy-paste from Wikipedia, which I'm going to read you right now. As the main model is that we are uh, thinking in, uh, start thinking in streams and propagation of changes. So this, uh, this, this paradigm, uh, allows us to think actually asynchronously in a, in a non-blocking way. Of course, like every good uh, stuff in the world, it has its own manifesto. It's still there, surprisingly. Yes, and more than that, it has a very, very nice, nice picture that you have so many times. So uh, what is good, that uh, the application you're running has to be responsive, resilient, so it has to, to actually uh, withstand a lot of uh, problems in a graceful way. It has to be elastic, so that means that you are, can grow uh, horizontally very easy. And of course, message-driven, so the propagation of change comes to you like messages and you react to them, and that's why you are reactive. And uh, general understanding of that is the best given by my personal guru, Venkap Subrabanyam. Uh, I'm very you know, happy that he was, he was there, he was here like the last time. And if you just Google for his talk about uh, reactive programming, you will see that uh, we have like three flows of events. Like you no, know, one is data flow, one is the complete channel, control channel, and the other is error channel. So that means that we don't block on coming data. We have full control of what's happening with this flow of data, and we are able to adequately react on errors in a graceful way. So we simply don't block, but we, we have... I will show it a little bit in the code. As a, uh, uh, as a next concept that we're going uh, to see today is exactly the reactive streams. By the way, I still don't have my timer, so I don't know what time is it. Uh, if you don't mind, just... Okay, just please fix that. 
Thank you so much. So uh, it's like the evolution of that. So uh, there is also a manifesto in reactive streams. And the main idea is, once again, you have um, a stream of events which code comes to you. And uh, this stream of events, the main part of it actually is the, the, is the idea of a back pressure. So it's not just stream, but it's also like a control stream of events. So whenever the consumer cannot sorry for this word, consume so much events, he's able to say that, guys, I'm fed of it, so stop for now. Uh, and once again, as it's fully uh, non-blocking and asynchronous, this actually gives us a lot better utilization of what we have. And uh, as I started from Java, uh, Java 8, now we have like Java 9, which is the next evolution, about how, how this should be implemented, but actually ended up with a changes that you know, like Flow API, back from the Java 9, which are just interfaces. And these interfaces uh, uh, like declare the standard way of, uh, of working with reactive you know, stuff. Technically, it's a combination of iterator and observable patterns. And you have subscriber, publisher, you know, subscription, and somewhere in the middle, which is like a processor. And as we know, uh, there are different implementations of that. Uh, of course, you know Project Reactor, so Spring Guys here. I see this very happy guy there. Good. Then uh, RxJava, then uh, something strange called Munity, and uh, even Apple has created their own Apple service stock for that. AkaStream is an interesting player, but Helidon is better, and now I'm going to tell why. Actually, what is Helidon Reactive Engine? It is inter interesting that from the very beginning we did not uh, like uh, somehow given the control to other frameworks. We have created our own framework and we are really, really you know, happy that the most contributions to this framework was given by David Karnak himself, who actually is the creator of, of uh, of the idea of reactivity. So we have the contributor from, you know, the, the, the guy who actually invented these things. And Helidon has its own set of reactive operators. So it's just a dependency. We are Maven-centric. I know people like Gradle. Good for you. <laughs> but we are Maven, Maven, you know, oriented. Maven-centric, and then you just include one dependency. And there you have two things, which is like uh, uh, multi. I would say it because, once again, I'm sorry for that, but Spring is like uh, the, most, uh, the most common framework right now. And uh, you probably heard of Flux. Nobody, anybody heard of Flux? OK, so for us, Flux is multi. Nobody knows what Flux is, but when you say multi, you know that multiple values there. So it's much more, uh, you know, adequate. And single, they call it mono, maybe because it's shorter, but single is just okay. So we have these two operators, and what makes it good, because we actually have a lot of way to process these streams. So uh, whenever you have uh, the engine, we have all the operators which you can control the flow of events coming, the control the flow of, uh, in a reactive way, and you have a really bunch of good operators there. So if you take a look, I hope you can read it, although it is quite, uh, quite uh, not sunny, but like, you know, uh, uh, yeah, sunny outside. So this is like we, uh, we made our, our, uh, our, how you call it? We will discuss it on the conference, being that we have to make it more shaded here. Yes, but once again, you have a publisher that actually publishes several events. You somehow process them with a processor, which is just a you know, bi binary function. And then you actually compose this result, and you, it works perfectly. I mean, you may say, what makes the difference with streams, stream API that we were getting used to like many years? Stream APIs give you only one control channel, which is the data channel, you know. As with this reactive stuff, you get three channels available to you. You get error channel, you get control channel, or I would say complete channel, and then you have the data flow channel. So you just publish your data as a flow, you process it, 
and you can gracefully, uh, gracefully wrap it up. And uh, what, is, what is cool about it so is that uh, uh, there is a bug on my slide, sorry for that. That these operators are sometimes faster than the competitors. The less is better, sometimes twice as fast. Because once again, in Helidon, reactive is not something outside given to you. It's just the core of the system. And we are quite happy about it. As a result, you become something called a reactive web server. So that means that uh, you just got a web server, which is done using reactive APIs. And as a result, you receive a fully reactive web framework. Actually, let's have a look at a small demo. I will try to demonstrate it right now. So uh, uh, once again, uh, for all who don't know, we have our own special CLI tool, which allows our customers to work better with Helidon. And uh, it's called Helidon. It's just a binary. And if you do Helidon in it, Um, it will, first of all, check for the latest version. I really hope you can read it, but it's quite, quite bright here. It checks for the latest version, and you can create uh, your Helidon application quite easily. So uh, we will choose the SE flavor, and we'll create a quick start application. We'll just say, hello. How many of you in your childhood, uh, in school I was programming BASIC? Some of you coded BASIC? Good. What was the first task you ever done? Create a, a query application, like you know, a few questions, and then it gives you a horoscope. Yes? Well, I'm the only one having this? Okay, this was my first application, who will answer several questions, as he said, if you are a good person or not. Yes, here is the same. You just answer a few questions, and uh, it creates you uh, an application. It actually generates you an application based on the uh, stuff you've given. And what we will do, let me see. Uh, oh my god, no, it's, let us do it on the other folder. CD desktop demo. Yep, let me do it again. I have now somewhere generated it very much outside of what I wanted. And let's have a look. Yes, we have a quick start SE application. And we will open our favorite EDE, which is, of course, IDEA. Anyone uses Eclipse here? You can stand and go out. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so what we have here. As you see, we have a bunch of pure Java code with a main method. Look. And what is good about it? I will not go too much in details because I really want to show you more. Is that whenever we create a web server here, main, main function, we just do start the server, it actually creates you a single of server. So we create one component server. That means that even the server itself is created in a reactive way. And you actually can consume it in a reactive way and do everything with it in a reactive way. So you just create the server like, you know, get the configurations with a builder pattern because we love it. And then when you do start, it will note, you know, start the server for you. You should have to wait for it. No, it will give you a single of it, which means it's not exactly a promise, but like, you know, I, uh, I a reactive, uh, reactive component setting, there's one element which will eventually start at some point. And as you see, uh, the, threat, the control to the threat is given immediately. And then we say, as the server is started, because like, you know, single is also extending completable future. I was talking in that previous, uh, previous talk. Whenever the service is started, we say, OK, the server is up. Whenever something goes wrong, we have this, uh, this error stream which is happening exactly. We say, uh, whoops, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, whenever something goes wrong, we have an exception stream saying us something gone wrong, like this HDMI connection, and we will say that startup is failing. And this is it. Then you only have uh, 
to actually specify how your server reacts. Like for example, here's a greeting application. As I say, only one annotation that we're using, override. And the other stuff is, okay, we get a request and response and we say, okay, hello world, or hello something. So uh, this means that uh, Helidon from the very foundation is reactive, means that all the code you do there is reactive. And if you start it, I will do, I will try to do this directly from the EDE. Not need me even all this stuff, just because I can. Because it's just a Java app, nothing, nothing special. And you see it starts in fractions of second, and I can do my lovely curls, not swoodles, but curls. Like uh, greetings, uh, where are you? Yeah, J prime, of course, J prime. And it will return you something. And of course, I can read metrics, health, and all of that stuff. Uh, right, you know, easily. So that means fully reactive from the very beginning web server. It's there, it's working, and that makes Caledon quite unique. I will then show you actually in real examples uh, why that makes big difference. Uh, wait a minute, where was it? Sorry. Where is the, where are the slides? And of course, as I said, we have here to come here to messaging because uh, as previous speakers said, we use a lot of messaging these days and they're actually one of those ways to asynchronously communicate with other, other services. So uh, as a result, we actually, uh, now as a result, as a foundation, that's why I call it part 2.5, we took the reactive, Microsoft reactive messaging, just because it's part of the specification. So you can easily just write an annotation. This is working in MP like from one stream, you can just produce some messages, well, like reactive stream of messages, as you see here, and you can easily convert them to any flow of events. Should it be multi, should it be, f should it be flowable for Rx Java, should it be flux for springs? Oh my God, no, please don't do it. Uh, but it's so much easier to convert them. And uh, once again, if you do it in an imperative way, uh, this is completely, uh, I would say, compatible with the microprofile specification. You can read all about things uh, in, in these links. Uh, they are too long. I don't know why, why they make them too long, but this is it. But in Helidon, we take it one step further. We introduced so-called reactive messages. So we took the streams and actually wrapped it inside of our reactive framework. So once again, Maven dependency, you can experiment with Gradle, but I don't think it's going to work. And we have created some constructions for you, like channel, publisher, subscriber. They're all following the main ideas of, uh, of, uh, of the specification, but they are asynchronous. So you just create a channel, you just build it, and it gives you an asynchronous communication way, and you, once again, asynchronously react on changes. So once again, you get a processor which is somewhere in the middle. So it takes subscribers as an upstream and a publisher as a downstream. It's in the middle. It, can, it processes your stuff. And uh, I'm sorry, it's very hard to get this code in, in, um, in one slide. But once again, you get a channel. You publish it. You make a processor in the middle. Then you subscribe it and you just start it. And it works in a synchronous way, in a reactive way. I mean, it really follows not only the idea that this is a flow of events, but it also completes to back pressure. Whenever the server can't respond to so many messages, it has the back pressure mechanisms. And as you see, it's just a few builder patterns. And uh, the main idea of reactive messaging in Helidon SE, that uh, is the same, just pure Java solution, which has no magic philosophy. So just pure Java with this stuff. And as a result, in the middle, for the publisher and subscriber, you can put different, different uh, you know, message brokers. So it's an abstraction. So your messages are not just you know, somewhere in the memory, but you can put them through Kafka, uh, because everybody loves Kafka. I don't know why. Uh, you can put them via JMS, of course, AQ. And our socket connector, I made it. It's going to be part of uh, 
3.1, I guess, release. So our socket is a protocol uh, by Oleg Dokuka, who is a very famous guy. Uh, it's a full protocol, which is actually reactive, but we still support it. So you can pass your messages from different broker, and it's just going to be an abstraction, which makes it really cool. Uh, actually, let us, let us take a look at a small demo I've created for you. Uh, it has Kafka running in Docker. So first, I have to actually run it. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but it did work. Uh, yes, this is ARM64 machine. Today, Docker uh, has no updates. I'm surprised. Yes, it usually does update, but today he's not having a update. Uh, just give me a second. You see? As I just, oh yes, here's the coordinator. As I, as I talk to, like, you know, Docker stuff, it's there. And what we have, actually, we will send some message. Config it very easily. By the way, you see, we have a good support from IntelliJ ID8, you know, sends our logo here. We just say, okay, here is the Kafka drop all the messages there. Here is the topic. Just drop it there, and we will handle them. And uh, what do we have? We have sending something, sending service, which just sends a message. We create a channel. We say, OK, here is the Kafka. We have a configuration for that. Just drop in, emit it in a reactive way, as you see. Just put the emitter on, and that's it. On the other side, we have a WebSocket server. WebSocket endpoint, once again, because we can, uh, it just creates another channel which takes the messages from there and pushes like a WebSocket messages. Once again, it's so easy when I won't go to too much details here, but you just create a channel, and with this abstraction, it can go through anything. Should it be AQ, should it be JMS, or whatever. And if we run it, I will do Maven, no, I will do just Java minus jar. Uh, what was that? Target, and uh, yes, Kafka WebSocket. Starts so, so fast. Uh, just a second. Where are you? Oh, wait, just go localhost 7000. Uh, where is the bra? Oh, here it is. Yes. You just send a message, and it goes to a Kafka, and then from Kafka it's pushed like a WebSocket to your application. Very fast, with only one actually abstraction. So that's why, just in a reactive way, you create it so fast. So reactive messaging is something that we tolerate much, and we actually, it's used a lot, and... Uh, it is awesome. Oh, sorry for that. Yes, let's go back to the slides. Uh, then, when everything has to be reacted, once reacted, you have to be always reactive, which is the problem. So that's why we created our own DB client, which is completely asynchronous. So that means that uh, you can talk to your database, which can also be synchronous, in a synchronous way. It will not block your threads. It just gives you a single or multi-values of it and uh, you work in a synchronous way. It cares to create its own executor there, and uh, with this executor, it just blocks somewhere outside. Your application is not blocked at this point. So that's why uh, once reactive, everything is reactive. The same is for web clients, so we can consume other services, uh, and this will also be in an in a unblocking way. So Helidon creates a full chain of unblocking stuff, that you can do to make it really reactive. But let's go back to blocking stuff. Uh, reactive is, is hard. You probably saw some constructs like single, like all of that stuff. If you don't, if it's so hard, you can use Project Loom for that. Actually, Project Loom was till like latest, like uh, uh, latest month, a, uh, I would call it experimental project. But you see, there is a JAP already, which actually pushes it to real JDK, and you can already use it. 
So what is the main idea for those of you who don't know? So the main idea is the virtual, are the virtual threats. So real threats are expensive. It means whenever you start a threat, you add additional two megabytes to your, to your memory just for the threat, to handle the threat. And, uh, you know, managing the threat is also always a pain. Uh, I was able to start even on this machine only 400 threads, and it simply died. For that, uh, the concept of virtual threads was created. So the idea is that whenever, for us as an API is the same, but whenever the virtual thread is blocked, it's recognized by the JVM that it's blocked, and it's unmounted from the carrier thread. Carrier threads are the real threads, making room for the others. Uh, whenever it's unlocked, the schedule will see, okay, how many unlock threads do we have? And we will uh, you know, schedule it directly. Fork join is used as a carrier thread, so it's implemented as a continuations, as continuations, but it has no external API. So as a result, so we have this project page you can go to and uh, go to the early access builds. The main feature is now the threads can be millions, and you don't have to think in unblocking asynchronous reactive ways. You mentally block them, but in real life, JVM manages it and like unblocks everything for you. And uh, the threads actually are threads as an API. So for your coding model, nothing changed. The only thing there are through several, several methods, which are like a you know, virtual thread executor, but this is also subject to change as this program is uh, still experimental. For us in Halidon, you just need a property to say, OK, go to virtual threads, and it will pass all the blocking threads through virtual executors. Only one property, and you can actually enforce it. And this is awesome. For Halidon IC, you actually don't need it because it's not blocking by its nature. But for Halidon IP, you can do this. So we have a real world example, real world in like real world. Slow blocking threads, quick uh, threads, and long threads usually block uh, thread and don't let other smaller threads work. So how we usually f you know, solve the problem so when the threads are blocked? We add more threads, which is don't do this neither at home, neither at work. It simply won't work. Rewrite everything with, uh, in a reactive way. As you saw, Helidon has everything for that. It is awesome but everything has to be reactive. And then you have to switch to uh, virtual threads, which is Loom. And let's actually try it. So I have created, not I, all the credits goes to Thomas Lange, who was our engineer. Uh, he had created two things. I have 12 minutes. Is this right? Good. Huh? OK, two, mo two, two minutes less. Sorry for that. Uh, yes, uh, we have uh, a server which actually just serves requests. There's a quick request which immediately returns something, and there is a, a, a long request which actually just sleeps because we are smart. And uh, we have two clients which are quick clients, and uh, it simply acquires it simply acquires the the endpoint. And it just does some monitoring just to show us how many threads are there. And the same, absolutely the same, is done with our reactive client. As you saw, it's so, so small. Here we even have to do some tricks because um, reactive is not blocking by its nature. So that's why we have created another scheduled you know, thread pool supplier just to try to like slip it because we usually don't block. And this is the same. And now let us try actually running them. Just give me a second. Where is my super mega terminal? Too many terminal opens, windows open, but I will uh, try to do this. OK, so what do we have here? First of all, we have to switch to JDK 19. We are now looking to the future. Yes. This JDK 19 has, oh, once again, this, uh, sorry, HDMI went out. Uh, JDK 19 has virtual threads, so I downloaded the JDK there, and it was pre-built for you. 
I just say it because uh, otherwise you simply won't run too much of uh, it's already like getting to be included in the in the real JDKs that are provided, but early access is there. <coughs> so as I told you, for us there's only one option that we switch. If you go back a little bit to the code, uh, where are you? If we go a little bit to the code. Ah, I hate it, but okay. Once again, it's only one property. So we start the clients. They start acquiring. Uh, they start acquiring the application, the the, the endpoints. Uh, yes, client slow. He starts. Then I will do jar minus jar client 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 quick. Once again, only errors. He tries to do that, but he cannot do anything. And here I will start our Helenon clients with the normal blocking way of doing operations. It's just a second. Yeah, it started. So I would say no, uh, no loom. Uh, yes, I have to switch. Uh, this is strange. Wait a second. JDK 19, JDK 19. I've switched it. Sorry for that. I had to be more prepared. Once again, this talk was done like two days ago. And you see the HDMI simply broke everything. I have to quit. Ah, somebody to tell a joke? Do you know jokes about HDMI's? What is wrong with you? Okay, you see we did something f amazing. We broke Mac OS. Let me just close it, force quit. Oh my god. Let me... No, we won't report anything. Let me stop it for now. Let me stop it for now. And let's do it again. Demo gods are not with me today. <coughs> Let's do it again. <coughs> so here are the scripts. They're actually telling us, OK, guys, these are the virtual threads, and that's it. Let me just check if my JDK is, is, uh, is OK. <coughs> OK, CD. CD, libraries, Java, Java virtual machines. Oh, okay. I will just uh, JDK 17. I will just move uh, JDK 19 to to JDK 19 dot SDK. Of course, sudo. Let us do it again. We start with no loom. Hey, what's wrong with you? Sorry. Funny thing is that it did work in the morning. Oh, yes, JDK. Thank you. to jdk19 dot jdk good let's do it again ah feel better 
Thank you for the debugging information. Now, we start the clients once again. Client slow and client, client quick. So what is the situation? When client slow works, the client quick simply is totally blocked here. You see, it had only some like 20 to 20, 14 attempts to acquire something because whenever you have something which is blocked, it's simply blocked for you. You see, working like, like expected. Now, we will do a uh, reactive way of doing stuff. So it's the same client, and we will do just Java minus jar target uh, yes, yeah, server reactive. It's the same functionality done in a reactive way. Now you see the huge difference. The, the long calling threads are doing as they are, but the non-blocking threads requests are like thousands now. So that means when we don't block, we can return work with both slow and quick clients. So reactive is like have solved this problem for us. So this is absolutely the same server writing with Helidon, but just in another flavor. You see, it works, and it gives you a lot of performance. We stop it, and then we switch back to the same server, but Loom now is on. No code change, but just, just uh, one property on. And what we see right now, is that suddenly the very same code stopped blocking and started returning our, uh, the requests. That means that changing only one client and switching to Loom JDK makes it available to us to highly optimize our environments with just one property, just switching to Loom. And the code is still blocking. But now the JVM cares for us for like, you know, uh, uh, you know, switching from, look, I would say, from uh, virtual threads being managed and, and, uh, and working with, with the carrier threads. You see, it's getting warmer, it's warmer, but it's still about 20,000. So what do we have here? So that means that blocking way of coding is also valid after this loom change arrives. But once again, it's only 21,000. If we switch to non-blocking ways, it's immediately getting to, like, you know, much more thousand stuff. Wait a minute, did I stop it? Yes, did I stop it. And this makes it very, very, very interesting because you still can write code in a blocking way, but with the unblocking way, you receive much, much better performance right now, at least of this machine. So, Interesting times we're living is that you can do fully reactive stuff, but it's performing really great. But somewhere in the future, maybe next year, you can still try to run your application in a, uh, in a uh, blocking way. Uh, and it will do all the stuff for you. I think I've closed my slides. Sorry for that. OK, here are the slides. Yes, you don't saw anything. There is something we are really working on today, uh, which is interesting, and it's called NEMA. In Helidon, we decided that we want a fully JDK-based server. As you know, as you know, uh, uh, Netty is has a lot of uh, a lot of code which is uh, which is machine-specific. We have created our own Loom-based web server, which is totally blocking. And the funny thing is, it utilizes virtual threads and hence switches, sealed classes, all of that newest stuff. But the performance of it is actually better than Netty. And uh, what makes it really cool, it's only pure JDK with absolutely no uh, additional stuff. So uh, it will be open sourced this month or maybe next month. So uh, once again, Reactive is awesome. You have everything for that especially in Helidon. But if you like blocking stuff, you can also switch to blocking stuff when Loom is back. Before that, if you need performance, you have to be reactive. This is it. 
Whenever you want to more learn about more what Helidon is, how to learn it, we have a lot of, a lot of uh, materials published on the official channels. And once again, reactive is awesome if you understand it. This is hard, officially hard. For the other, there is blocking. And as you see, quite soon it will work very close to this. So when I say versus, very soon there will be no winner. But now, you have to understand it. So this is everything from my side. Thank you so much. Sorry for the, for the, uh, for the uh, technical issues.